Hey guys, welcome back. Up next, Nomad. Well, hey guys, and welcome to another Interstellar Modeler. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you another 3D printed project. This is Nomad from the Star Trek episode called The Changeling, one of my favorite episodes of the original series. If by chance you're not familiar with it, uh, Nomad is a probe that the Enterprise encounters. It is something that was launched originally from Earth in 2002 as an interstellar deep space probe, but uh, through its travels and encounters this alien probe, they merge and create this more powerful entity. Uh, Nomad is something I've always wanted a replica of. Don't ask me why, I always thought it was a cool looking robot, but no one's ever made a model kit. Recently, I ran across a file on Thingiverse, which you can download for free, uh, that allows you to create a model kit of the robot. Now, I originally intended to have this on the channel quite a bit ago, but unfortunately, it's kind of stretched out longer than I anticipated, mainly because uh, of my inexperience with 3D printing. I ran across some problems. Um, and so what I'd like to do in this video is first show you the parts of the model kit and then discuss with you uh, the issues that I came across with printing the model, just in case uh, you're interested in doing this yourself. Uh, hopefully this will give you um, some background so that you don't run across the same problems I did. Now, lastly, what I'd like to do is go over my plans for lighting, and this is gonna be a first for me. I'm gonna be including a soundboard into the display so we can hear some of Nomad's famous quotes. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what I have here are 12 pieces, and there are a few others included in the kit, which I'll show you those extra pieces here shortly. So here's the main body, which is hollow, and as you can see, the designer did allow plenty of room for the model to be lit. And uh, then we've got the, the main head. Uh, this is the neck that goes at the bottom of the head. And then I'm gonna call this the main antenna that rests on top. And then at the bottom slides in this piece, and then the very bottom of the probe attaches here. Now also included are the detailing that is uh, around the base of the neck and that's what these pieces are. Let me show you a close-up. I think you did a great job with designing these. Uh, looking at reference pictures, they look pretty good. And then we've got two uh, probes that uh, come with the file as well. I'm going to be reprinting these. This one did not come out very well, but uh, they're supposed to be placed on top of his head here. One is this length and the other one is a little shorter. Now, um, these are pieces that are also included, and what these are designed for is to help you hold the LEDs for the interior of the model. Now, um, these are fairly large, as you can see, compared to our model kit. Uh, I originally intended on printing this larger, and I'll go over that in a second. But um, I printed them because I wasn't sure what my plans were for lighting the kit. However, I'm not gonna be using these um, because I'm gonna go in a different direction. So let's go ahead and talk about the print. Now what you see here are three of five attempts to print the main body. Let me take a minute to walk you through what happened. So first of all, the designer of the file recommended that the model be placed with the top or closed side against the bill plate. Being new at this, I was uncertain as to whether or not supports were needed. I figured it wouldn't hurt having them on the inside, but this is what ended up happening. I ended up placing way too many supports, and when they cured, they expanded and cracked the exterior. So it was on to the next try. I decided to go complete without supports, which after two attempts resulted in what you see here. Although most of the body printed, the top did not adhere to the bill plate properly, causing it to split. At this point, I felt this was the best I would be able to get and decided to settle on what I had and attempted to fix it. The top section, however, was not the only thing that needed to be fixed. The third window, which was designed to be rectangular, is actually supposed to be square, something I noticed while watching the episode for reference. Using putty, I was able to fix this, but as you can see, there was yet another problem, significant bulging around all of these panels. Nonetheless, I proceeded with painting it silver and added this detailing on the corners. But the closer I got to installing the lights, I became more dissatisfied with it and decided to give it one more try. This time, I decided to go smaller. Now my first attempts were sized to take advantage of the entire bill plate, which proved to be the major mistake. I wanted to try to get the biggest print possible. Unfortunately, this placement, as well as the lack of supports along the top, is what led to the poor adhesion and the splitting. So this time, I did a few things. I added some supports along the top, increased the exposure time, as well as the cure time for the piece, and all of these adjustments led to a successful print. There were still some defects along the top because of the supports that I added, and those were easy to repair using Bondo. I also used Bondo to decrease the size of that third panel, but this time I went just a little larger than my first attempt. 
Okay, now let's move on to the sound card. And this is the first time I've ever tried anything like this. And I didn't want to spend a ton of money on this, so I went to eBay and found one for 12 bucks. Now what we have here is this little card that's powered by these three batteries, and we have a speaker. We have a record button, and we have these other buttons that trigger the sound bites that you record. Now you have to physically have this next to your source and record the sound bites onto it. I know that there are fancier ones out there you can digitally um, move the recordings onto the sound card. Uh, but this one's not as fancy, and uh, so what I did was I took my camcorder, recorded some scenes from the episode, fed those into iMovie, edited them down, and I placed this right next to the speaker, and the recordings came out pretty well. Let me just show you or uh, give you a sample here. So I was pretty happy with the way this all came out, and then I moved on to uh, arranging all the lighting. And so I, I went ahead and, and told Model Train Software what I had in mind, and I, I uh, communicated with them and wanted these lights, first of all, for these squares. And uh, if you watch the episode, you'll notice that he's got these green lights that uh, blink in a certain fashion. And I thought I could duplicate that with some small Pico size SMDs in each of these panels. So I'll show you that later, uh, but uh, they, they work out really well. And so that was the first thing that was solved. Now the next thing was how to do the lights um, up here. So my initial idea was to just use um, uh, flickering LEDs. I uh, was telling them about this project and they said, you know what, we could probably take that sound card and see if we can sync it up to the lights. And so I sent them the sound card and they gave it their best shot. Now they were able to do this with Pico size SMDs, which I thought would be bright enough um, to light up or at least give me enough illumination at the top here, but they unfortunately are not. And the other problem is that the batteries that power this are not strong enough to give us a bright illumination here. So they were able to sync the lights to the voice. Unfortunately, when they flickered, they were very dim. And uh, we tried upgrading the batteries and that still didn't work. I actually thought at first I could just make the LEDs uh, bigger, but they definitely were not strong enough to power up um, larger LEDs. So that being the case, I decided to abandon that whole idea what I had them do was to ship me some mega size flickering SMDs for the top, which I'm going to glue onto this square piece here so that we'll have one per side. And uh, I'm going to put a little post here that will be able to dangle this um, to the proper height. And, um, and it'll flicker, simulating the effect that happens when he speaks. So it's not going to be synchronized, but it'll be a, an effect that hopefully will simulate that. And here's a look at the SMDs I'll be using for this project. These are Pico size SMDs from modeltrainsoftware.com. Uh, they were kind enough to design this for me. They hooked it up to a nice little circuit board that allows them to blink and sequence like this. And the last thing to show you are these sheets that I found at Hobby Lobby. They are meant to replicate the look of water. And uh, I figured, you know, looking through here, uh, if you look close enough, you'll be able to see the wires and everything dangling around on the inside. So I thought we could kind of obscure that a little bit with some styrene plastic. So I had in mind to just install clear, flat uh, styrene plastic, but I found these, which I think would act really well as kind of a diffuser there and give us yet another effect to those lights. Uh, so I'm going to cut a piece for each of the panels, and then uh, I'll use uh, Tamiya's clear paint to paint the red and uh, or the orange and yellow colors for here. And I'm going to leave the bottom one uh, clear because the lights are already green. All right, guys. Well, that does it with part one of this build. Uh, we'll dive right into the build in part two. So I'll see you then. Take care.